Hello everyone and welcome back to To Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In the previous video we set up this resource scanner around the moon and the uploading of data was super 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 slow and somebody correctly reminded me that I had the same problem in the Mars colonization series and yeah I basically did the fix the same way. Uh, so what happened was the transmission rate was so slow uh, because they had divided the packet size, it's a number that the antennas in Kerbal Space Program use to determine how quickly the transmissions happen. Uh, it, uh, configuration for RO Kerbalism uh, divided the packet size by 10,000. So they reduced the speed at which the transmission happens by a factor of 10,000. I have only divided it by 100 now. <laughs> Interestingly, it seems like it's still happening slower. And I do wonder whether it's computer dependent, like it's actually CPU core cycle dependent, uh, how quickly these things transmit uh, based on the packet size, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, we are scanning, and so we will complete this in time warp. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, uh? Oh, no, it's still going. Okay, it fooled me there. Uh, so I'm not gonna do it at a high time warp. I want to actually see it happen. Can it still show it? No, it stops. Shoot. Maybe it'll still show it to me here. Nope. Okay, it doesn't like that time warp. <laughs> All right, I'll keep it here just for safety's sake, and I'll come back to you when it's done, and then we'll see the results of the scanning. Okay, so we do in fact have our concentrations of ore after resource scanning is complete. And in fact, even with a 80% cutoff, we seem to have a fair amount of ore here. Even a 90% cutoff in that location seems to have quite a lot. Uh, not the most accessible one. I would like to land at one of the more equatorial locations. I guess this is the equator, right? Yeah. Uh, closer to down here and just take the 80%. Now we will be focusing on ore as I've done previously because I configured the ISR units, the in situ resource utilization yeah, units to convert from ore to the some of the resources that we need. Now, technically, I allowed the conversion of ore to liquid methane, and that was because I could, uh, assumed that we would be getting rocks from Mars, basically. And so we would be extracting stuff from Mars and sucking in air from the atmosphere to make methane. Uh, not air, I should just specify CO2. Air is the particular concentration that we have on Earth. But yeah, CO2 from the atmosphere to make methane, that isn't available on the moon. Uh, so we can only really make hydrogen and oxygen on the moon. I'll try to be uh, decent about that. We'll just focus on getting hydrogen and oxygen on the moon so that we don't uh, mess around too much. But obviously this stuff isn't at the poles, so that won't be quite realistic. But we'll have to go with where the ore is. And there isn't water at the poles either. And as far as hydrates are concerned, even those aren't at the poles so much except for that little spot there. So uh, it's not like we can uh, get this stuff from the poles no matter what. So we'll just go for the ore. Uh, though, you know, having the whole polar setup would be an interesting thing as far as realism is concerned because that is where the ice is on the moon and that's probably where we would in real life be drilling and getting our fuel replenishment from, and also getting water for life support and oxygen for life support, right? Because they can breathe that once you split the water up. But anyway, that is basically where we're headed. You can see the line of the moon's orbit like that, and yeah, right around there. So with that in mind, let us turn back to VAB and check out what I'm going to be doing next. And what we are mainly going to be doing in this video is various tests with the Lynx spacecraft. This is a spacecraft that I made previously, but has been substantially redone, especially to make use of the pass-through system. You can see the seats there, and Kerbals will have to walk in. Unfortunately, the walkway was sized for the Orion 3 space plane, and so it sort of clips in in an unrealistic way. And that's because it's meant to fit the space plane and not the Lynx spacecraft but we'll take it as is. I don't think it's gonna cause a problem. So test number one, because we're using the pass-through system with Kerbalism, the Kerbals have to start out in a cabin and get out and get into the spacecraft and take their seats. Otherwise, if they take their seats and then leave the seats, they don't get the resources that they need and then there will be problems. So 
uh, yeah, the walkway is actually clipping in quite a ways into there. But let us first test out the ability to ingress and egress, if you will, and what we might need to do. Do they need? Uh, they might need like uh, little ladder rungs here. Let me put some because, or we could shift the whole pod down a bit. But I think ladder rungs here might be a good thing to do. So these are the things we need to think about. And then we're going to test the abort system, and then we're going to test its launch, of course. We'll have two sets. Hopefully that won't throw anything off, but anyway, that's going to be on the launch escape system, so it won't matter. Okay, so let us have Jeb do it. Uh, no, uh, yes, launch as access level, that's right. Okay, we won't worry about staging right now, we're just heading out and heading back in. Normally the seats would recline for launch. They're not going to be in the position they are right now. Right now they're in a position for landing, if it was a lander rather than launch. Okay, so... Let's see. Click the crew hatch. EVA. EVA is out of nitrogen. Should not be out of nitrogen. See, this is the problem. We have to be careful that our Kerbals can operate properly here. As Jeb walks out. So yeah, I had to make this extra hatch in the launch escape system you see here. That's funny. Uh, and so yeah, he does collide with it. He could probably jump. Oh, his head... Okay, okay, he fits. <laughs> I mean, I was worried he'd be too tall. Uh, of course, uh, humans can go so long ways in, right? They can tilt themselves to sort of slide in. Uh, Kerbals can't do that. So you could board that chair, that chair. Uh, let's just board the normal chair. Okay, uh, test. Let's see, uh, again, it's not quite fitting right, but I don't want to make a new one for every single spacecraft. So that can retract. Those can close. Yeah, so that closes properly. Okay, that's a new animation. I didn't uh, have that before. And there's also a hatch in here for a pod, so raise hatch. Oh, that side hatch isn't going up. Why is that? I don't know why that animation isn't work working. So let me just verify if I close. Yeah, that one isn't moving. Hmm. That's not good. Then they're going to have an open spacecraft like that. I don't know why that is. Yeah, we definitely need more cameras. Okay, Jeb, leave seat. And we verify that Jeb does have resources. Okay. And, oh, it's down there. No, you don't have to be underneath the panel. Oh, gosh. Uh, can you hop? Hop. No. Clamber. Okay, fine. You can clamber. Anything that... Oh, we probably need ladder rungs inside, don't we? Uh, can you get through? Okay, he can get through. Not that we'll normally be going this way around, but it's good to know that works. We do not have an elevator that actually goes down to the surface, so that is that is not a feature at the moment. Uh, they've always faced that way because it's mainly for getting out. All right, so that is the thing. And let's just bring that in and then we're going to do a pad abort test, which probably won't work, but we'll see. So, okay, in here, raise hatch. Well, so you can raise hatch here. Boy, hatch. But maybe because it thinks it's shrouded inside the launch escape system, it doesn't allow the animations? I don't know. Okay, nobody this time, just in case something horrible happens. And we're going to go ahead and try the abort. The question is whether it gets high enough and clear of the, uh, the carrier plane, too. Okay, so retract that. Oop, I did not want Final Frontier just yet. 
Let's see, if I don't close the hatch, can we do this hatch first? Well, we may have an opening <laughs> during launch like this. I'll have to figure out what to do about that. I don't know, because they have to be able to get in. We have to have the hatch down. Anyway, okay. Yeah, staging is all wrong, but we are going to just go ahead and see what happens when we abort. Oh, no, we want to follow it. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, we need the... Okay, that didn't happen exactly the way I wanted it, but... We just hope that we never have to use that, of course. Well, 6.1 meters per second. Right now, I think Aro Kerbalism doesn't have the failures active, but it's possible that I might configure my parts to have random failures for Kerbalism, and in that case, well, we might need a paddleboard, you never know. Might be going too far though. So there's the links without the thing on it. Can we close the hatch now? So, oh, now we can. Okay, so after the launch escape system is gone, we can raise the hatch. All right. Let's revert. So reversion, just for testing purposes. We will not revert during actual missions. Okay, so here we're going to go for an uncrewed test of the spacecraft. And so we're just going to close that up, make sure nobody is snuck in. And it is interesting because basically we have two pods connected to each other, right? We've got the Link spacecraft pod with its service module, and then we've got the second stage pod too. So it's two back-to-back -back pods in here. But anyway, let us try it out to see if it works as intended. Okay, here we go. Throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. Launch. I should do the aim camera thing, but anyway, we are off. So my expectation is that maybe this can uh, toss that pod to a high orbit. And maybe, just maybe, the pod can go to the moon direct like this. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, just for a flyby, not for orbit. But it's not entirely clear. I didn't actually look at the Delta Vs. I'm just thinking thinking about it because the pod shouldn't overburden the payload capacity of this at all. Alright, we should be through max Q here. Everything is looking good. balance might be a little bit off. I had to shift the payload plus second stage to fit the, the walkway. Normally we'd have it further up, which helps balance. So we'll have to see. Okay, turning some engines off and rolling. Okay, roll complete. We'll let this run until 4,000 meters per second orbital velocity, or when the pitch gets a little bit too much. And this time I'm not going to follow the space plane down. We fitted the second stage with its normal engines, which are 250 kilonewton engines. That means it has about half the thrust that it had with the, in the previous video with the two Prometheus engines. So we do have to follow it. I mean, uh, we can't come back to the carrier plane. Okay, well, we got to 4,000 and separation. And following the pod here. Uh, let's get rid of the launch escape system. That's good. And we'll have RCS as well. Uh, just point pro. Oh, oh wait, uh, control from here. Yes, okay. Uh, there we go. The ignition is good. Maybe a little bit rolled, but there they are. They're just 250 kilonewton 
methane oxygen engines, 367 second ISP. However we get that will be fine. <laughs> uh, let's see, it looks like 12 degrees. should probably pitch up more. We don't have as much thrust as previously. Let me just verify that the hatch works. Okay, yeah. We have it action grouped and everything. There's also an upper hatch. That hatch part is actually a separate part. The upper hatch is the one that comes with the spacecraft. And that's for if they've docked to something and they can move through that. They don't have to open the side hatch. So there are two hatches on the spacecraft. Let's see... Well, it says 4,400 meters per second, so it's not a lot extra, actually. We do have a full service module, but it might not be enough to do the moon. No, it doesn't look like it is. The docking port we have on top here is a pass-through docking port. And so the, that just means that the colliders are along the docking port and would allow Kerbals to go through it. Unlike the normal docking ports you get in Kerbal Space Program, which of course, solid. Well, we'll toss this as high up as possible so that we test the heat shield with as much intensity as we can. And same with Star Stage 2, which we didn't actually recover last time. We'll try to recover properly this time. Well, we are over Cape Canaveral there. Or close to it. The two things we can see visible are probably Pad 39A and Pad 39B there. Okay, getting close to orbit here. And good enough. Uh, 282 by 131, let's say. And we have 774 meters per second left. A total of 2,508. So. Uh, we would need about 3,200 to do a lunar flyby mission, and obviously that is not enough all combined, but we'll see how far we can get. And also, if we replace this with a non-reusable hydrolock stage, it should work. So we could think about that and just go with a procedural tank, or maybe I'll make a custom... Maybe I'll make my own centaur stage. If, well, it'll be much bigger than the centaur stage. I think it's time for a new... A uh, brand new stage that isn't at the S4B stage or maybe the upper stage of New Glen. Anyway, so let us continue though with this. I would like to splash down in daylight, so we'll make this our periapsis end. Uh, the Pacific is much easier to splash down in though. Um, yeah, no, we'll splash down in the Atlantic, so... Around here for periapsis will be fine. Prograde. And we'll just continue burning. It's possible it's reading the combined delta V ROM. We'll see. Okay, okay. I want to actually be able to retrieve it this time. Okay, separation. Oh no, don't tell me it's not... Oh no, I put it on the wrong node? No... <laughs> um, hmm. Well, actually, that's not a problem. Well, hmm, that's sort of a problem. <laughs> we can still test the recovery of the pod. Uh, uh, yes, I want to do that. Okay, so this is free. And 282 meters per second. So it should be able to get a re-entry orbit on its own. Now we've got to deal with this thing. I don't know. I don't think we can burn through this or anything. If we had a Kerbal with us, they could do the whole dissemble. Oh, but that's the dissemble part thing might be a USI thing. I don't remember. Well, of course, there's vapor and feed lines. Okay, but we can still do the re-entry. It's just got to be a little bit more complicated. Let's do the... Oh, we don't have any comms. Hmm. Uh, I guess that's just a location thing. Yeah. What are our commsats doing over there? Okay, so I might have to edit, or maybe we just need to add an antenna to it, but its internal antenna was supposed to be able to communicate far enough, obviously. So 
maybe I need to boost up the antenna range on the Lynx spacecraft. I'll make note of that. We should at least, without an extra antenna, be able to communicate to satellites that are there. I mean, they are reasonably high up, I'll give you that, but... Okay, I'll, I'll just say boost Lynx antenna. I don't want to go through this problem. Okay, but maybe we could add a high gain antenna to the outside. I, I'm long overdue to make some new antennae for things, so... Okay, but we'll wait on that one. Let us focus on this, which also needs a better antenna. <laughs> um, no, it, it, okay, I just got stuff back. Let me just pop on over here. Yeah, so I guess it was just temporary. What are we communicating through? But we're communicating through a ground station. Basically, at these antenna ranges, these relay probes are completely useless. Uh, great. Yep, so we, we need antennae that can communicate to our actual relay satellites. Alright, let us just focus on recovering this first, and then we'll try and recover the pod. This doesn't have solar panels, the pod does, so that's my logic. And burn. I don't want it to be that steep, it's probably too much. And just in case we lose communication, I'll arm the parachutes now. We are all set up for entry already. I've told Smart ASS to go in the right direction. We will see what happens. While we're doing this, let's take a look at when our next opportunity for Mars is going to be. So, plot that. Uh, pretty soon. So, we better get things going. Uh, we are going to add that alarm. 118 days. So we need to get... We're probably going to make a long ship uh, with ion engines and the works. After all, our launch capacity is so limited that we really need to use ion engines and efficient engines to make things work out. So yeah, we're going to assemble something in orbit with the Orion carrier plane and these little stages. And we will see how that works out. But we need to get all that stuff together by the time the transfer window approaches. Well, there is Mexico. So we're doing pretty well here. Maybe we'll splash down close, close to the Cape, or maybe we'll end up in Florida somehow. Okay, here we go. We've lost communication because of the plasma, I assume. Because otherwise you probably shouldn't have lost communication since we're passing by, like, Houston and everything. Just about. Oh, we might be short of Florida, actually. Yep, it looks like we're coming down in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, that's convenient, too. All the better for shipping back to Brownsville, after all. Or Boca Chica. Well, apparently we do not have a communication line right now. But, I have armed the parachutes, so it's alright. Looking like a dragon capsule, basically. The dragon one, I mean. All right, we are at 7.4 meters per second. So in the future, we'll try and make sure, of course, that we reserve enough fuel for it to deorbit. And well, we'll, we'll actually do the deorbit burn with them, but I won't necessarily always follow it down. Since I'm not in career mode and I don't need to recover the funds, we'll just assume that they get recovered all right, unless I'm feeling like watching the recovery for some reason. Uh, so sometimes I like things passing through the atmosphere. But yeah, this is assumed to be a viable system, though Kerbal Buoyancy is weird. Okay, recover. Alright, we have recovered that. Let's see about the links, which is of course the more important part here. So, we have discovered obviously a flaw with this particular launch that I will have to fix in the VAB. We need to make sure it's on the right node on the fairing base. Always happens, but 
this will not prevent us from doing the test, at least from this altitude. It's a shame that we couldn't use the 2,322. You know, it could have been enough. Let's see, if that's 2,322, uh, add maneuver. Because I think we had 700 left in the... in the star stage 2. That's so close. See, it's not. it wasn't too far off after all. And maybe if we didn't have this fairing base and that piece there, it would have enough, but just barely, right? I mean, it's a, it's a touchy amount here. But So I wasn't completely out of my mind that it could potentially do it. So that's interesting, but it is really way too tight for a crewed mission. Um, I'll just let it consume electric charge instead of reorienting it. We can't use the engine, so we will have to use the RCS to deorbit. Okay, well, with the RCS, this deorbit burn is going to take quite some time, though. So I'll come back to you when it's done. Okay, well, we've done quite a lot of RCS burning. As you can see, we're still doing it, and we just got a periapsis under 68 just now. I think we're going to have to take that. Uh, this is getting ridiculous. We're getting close to where I would normally separate the service module, so we are in fact going to do that. Well, we aren't leaving any space junk. <laughs> well, I guess there was those. There were those four fairings off of this. Those were sort of left in orbit, technically. All right. Everything looks fine to me. Separation. Right. And surface retro. Now this has an aero cap that technically needs to be separated for the parachutes to deploy, but they'll deploy anyway, so I'll arm them. Even without aero cap separation, I'm pretty sure they'll just deploy. Don't come bumping into us, okay? In theory, everything should work out just fine, but it's always good to test these things. It is a peculiar part. We've got some interesting novelties with the two hatches this time, compared to previous uses of the Lynx. 7.175 tons, as you can see, so it's not an absurdly light pod by any means. Unlike Dragon, it doesn't have the abort system built in, you know, it's got a separate service module and everything, so it would be lighter than Dragon just for that. Oh, so it's only meant for four, not for seven. It is more designed for high orbit missions, though, with the larger heat shield. And for those who don't know, the Lynx was designed such that basically we have the lander can inside, and so in order to convert the lander can into an orbital vehicle, we have this shell that's on top of it, this spacecraft shell, EVA capable, and an aero cap and the heat shield. So those get slapped onto the lander can. But basically the cabin is shared between the lander can and the orbital spacecraft. I'm not sure why people don't do that, but... I thought it was a good money-saving idea. I think we're going to be maybe landing in Mexico, though. Because of the long time we took to do the deorbit burn, that threw us off compared to the Gulf of Mexico uh, trajectory of Star Stage 2. Okay, we're getting through the worst of it here. And yes, indeed, right in the middle of Mexico. But this should be the only time we actually try to deorbit with the RCS instead of with the main engine, which is a ED7 engine burning methane and oxygen. Not a particularly powerful engine, the ED7. It is pressure fed and it's much smaller than, say, the Apollo service module engine. It should be able to do the trick and even push a lander into orbit around the moon while still reserving enough fuel for this to come back home for normal Apollo requirements. 
It'll just take a little bit more time. Okay, we have comms. Let me just turn that off. Uh, through... It's not quite north enough for White Sands, is it? Not sure, maybe. Maybe White Sands. Well, if we can pop off the arrow cap, we might as well. Oh, it's got a little bit caught. I thought the docking the docking board should be attached to the arrow cap. I don't know why it sort of got caught by it. I hate tossing off the arrow cap anyway. Dragon doesn't do that. Maybe we should just not have an arrow cap. Or pretend we don't have an arrow cap. It's so much trouble. Oh, off it goes. Yeah, I thought this would be... I guess I put it on the wrong node, the docking port. It was supposed to be on the arrow cap's top node, not the capsule's top node. Well, it's nice to have the docking port back, I suppose. Okay, 7 meters per second, so the parachutes here are okay. And would be a rough landing, but we are down. Okay, so let us fix the one thing that went wrong, uh, for sure went wrong, and that is making sure... Where is the node on here anyway? I guess it was just too close to the other node. Yeah, so let's reduce the height back down. Now it is on the right node, I believe. That seems like the way it was. Okay, so for the future, this will work out better, hopefully. But next time, I won't try this out again, though there is hope that we could potentially do a lunar flyby direct like this. We'll hold off on that sort of thing. We'll probably... I'll probably cook up some sort of hydrolock stage to make it a little bit safer. But next time I want to send some sort of ISRU unit to the moon to see if we can do some ISRU stuff there. And maybe we'll start construction of the Mars transfer vehicle and we're going to have to test that out as well. So I might we might be testing it on a trip to the moon too. So we will see. I mean, sort of the same idea, ideas, general ideas as the Mars colonization series but a little bit improved in all respects. Like the launch system is improved compared to the Sagita. I never was satisfied with the fact that the Sagita was not recoverable. So this is preferable over that as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, we'll just be making other improvements along the way. And I don't know if the pass-through system is an improvement or not, or just uh, more trouble for me, but we will see how that works out. It's certainly an interesting twist on things. Okay, so that looks like it's all set up a little bit better, except the, these went into the wrong place. I'll sort out staging uh, off camera, but with this I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.